Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrexit. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, we have hit the month of September. So Christmas is just around the corner. And in today's video, we have Donald Trump, who's been hit with the recall. Over 800 people across the channel, I, I believe on this weekend, there's been a major incident in Coventry. Gillian Keegan is a real raver. Wilco looks like it's gone from the high street. Obese people breaking hospitals. Smelly kids in schools. A company declares £92 million of losses. Wow. <laughs> and British schools are falling down, falling down, falling down. British schools are falling down. I'm going to tell you about that story. And welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. A special thanks to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all your messages for definite. And we're going to start off with in America with um, Donald Trump. Because obviously you know that Donald Trump has been hit with some recall, right? Which is very serious, right? I, what really amazes me, right, is that because it's been like Donald Trump and 19 people. One of them is a black guy, yeah? What's his name? Um... Harrison Floyd or something like that, his name is, right? I you know, I, I, look at, I look at him and I think to myself, do you not know the story of Mark Ponder? If you don't know the story of Mark Ponder, just look up that name and you'll see the story of Mark Ponder, right? But, you know, this, this, this guy, right, this Harrison Floyd or whatever his name is, right, he, out of all the rest of them, out of everybody else, and, you know, I say, I say you know, because he's the only black man, because there is a black woman involved in this as well. You wouldn't believe, but, yeah, there's a black woman who went and got herself involved. And I always say to black people, listen, black people, listen to what I'm saying to you. Don't think that you can do what white people do. It's not going to work for you, OK? You, right, and it's, you know who it always is? It's always... The black conservatives, Republican, Tories, the black ones, and the and Asian ones. It's always them. And so they think that they can do the same stuff as white people. I said, no, you can't. You can't do that. You know, black privilege doesn't give you that. Okay? You can't do the same thing as them. And so Harrison Floyd. Has um let's see Harrison Floyd yeah that has um he was in he was in custody for a good few days you know three or four days where all the rest of them was in and out in like fifteen twenty minutes all the rest of them right because you know they're all very they're they're all very important people right and you know they all have a certain amount you know up to you know up to a certain point they all get a certain, I mean even if even if these guys get sent to prison. Right, like you see, like Rudy Giuliani. Because uh, listen, Rudy Giuliani is going in jail. Him and um, Sidney Powell, she's the woman who released the Kraken. Right, them two for definite, and Mark Meadows as well. All these people, yeah, because he's you know he's a he was the chief of staff, right? You know, obviously you know who Rudy Giuliani is, and you know the, the Kraken woman. She was you know she was giving press conferences with um, with Rudy Giuliani. Right. And these people was breaking into. They've been breaking into um, election offices. They've been messing about with machine with the, with the with the voting machines, and they've been getting into all sorts of different nonsense. Right, you know, um, getting fake electors, getting you know fake electors to go up and say, well, we're the, we're the electors for whatever for this for this county or whatever. They were getting all that all that type of thing, and all of this stuff is highly illegal. And now you've got. I don't know if you know who John Eastman is. He's another one of these. He's another one who was working alongside Rudy. He was working with Donald Trump in the White House, you know, telling Donald Trump, you know, um, giving Donald Trump a, a completely illegal strategy. What was 100% illegal. And they all knew at the time that it was it was 100% illegal, which is the reason why they're saying they're all just like, well, they're not saying, well, you know what? We've never done it. We've never done any of this. Right? You're lying about you're lying about every piece of this. We haven't done any of this. They say, yeah, well, we've done it, but Hunter Biden's laptop. <laughs> you know, that's like you saying, well, you know what? The police have caught you in the middle of a bank robbery, and you said to them, well, what's your problem? These people's problem. 
Right? What about my next door neighbour, right, who was speeding last week, doing, doing 40 miles an hour in the 30 zone? What about him? Why, why are you nicking him? I think the police would look at you funny. But this is what these guys are all coming up with because, you know, they haven't really got any defence as to the offences they've committed. So all they can say is, well, oh, you're just coming after us because we're, because we're Republicans or because we're MAGA. So that's the reason why you're coming after us. You know, these people, I'll tell you something, right? These people, there's absolutely something wrong with them. That's the way I look at them. I look at them as myself. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing is a criminal offence, right? And then when they... You know, because what that is, it's a level, yeah, of white privilege that you just can't get past. Right? You know, white privilege extends to you have a mugshot taken, right, and you use it as a badge of honour. I'm going to speak for black, I'm going to speak for all black people now, right, but not the, the not the conservative ones, because they're just some crazy motherfuckers. But I can tell you, there's not a a sensible black person in the world who would have a mugshot taken right, and declare it as a badge of honour. Find me the black person that does that, and I'll and I'll find you someone a black person who's MAGA, right? And I'll prove to you, I'll prove to you that person is a conservative or they or they extreme MAGA or far right. Because a, a mugshot is never a badge of honour. Well, maybe if you've killed a paedophile, that might be different. Right, but a mugshot, yeah, is not a badge of honor for anything. It's not a badge of honor for you know. But Donald Trump is, you know, he's declaring that the black community love him even. Well, this is what his people are declaring. The black community love him even more now because we can. I suppose because we can relate to him because we're all criminals, so we can relate to him. I say, fuck you. Are you fucking stupid? Right, the black community fucking hate you. Right. And which is the reason why Donald Trump has been spouting off his mouth about election interference and Joe Biden is weaponising this and he's weaponising that. And I would just say, you know, if I was advising Donald Trump, I'd say to Donald Trump, do you really think, right, that the um, black community, right, Sorry, sorry. Do you really think that Joe Biden needs to encourage a black prosecutor to prosecute Donald Trump? I'll wait for your answer. No, he doesn't. Uh, well, you know, Biden would have no influence over them because these people right, would want to would want to prosecute Donald Trump because black people don't like Donald Trump. Donald Trump tried to have five black men murdered by the state. Okay, Donald Trump used to go to Ku Klux Klan rallies. Donald Trump uh, was sued by the state of New York because he wouldn't rent his building to black people. So do you really think that Don that these people right are su are suing Donald uh, 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 got charges against Donald Trump right for election interference? No, they've got charges against Donald Trump because he's a racist motherfucking ass. And you know when you when you are that way inclined. Right, and you have a load of black prosecutors, right, and you're committing crimes in their district, then you have to be stupid to think anyone is coming after you for election interference. You have to be as thick as two very short planks. And I think that that's I think that that's what the most of the Republicans are. But there's a lot of these guys. I'm not sure whether Donald Trump is getting up in prison. But Rudy Giuliani, he he needs to hurry up and die as quick or put this off as, as for as long as possible because that that bitch is going to end up dying in prison, right? Because he, he's going to spend because he's been hit with this. And you know, for people like that, yeah, there's no way. You know, it's all over the TV. And these guys, yeah, the level of white privilege these guys have got, right? They are giving. TV interviews. You know what that is, yeah? That's a prosecution's dream. Prosecutors only dream about you giving an interview as like, you know, as a suspect in a crime. Right? You've been charged with a crime and you're then going to give interviews. Right? Well, you're basically admitting the crime, but you're saying, well, you know, what about Hillary's emails? <sighs> anyway. We've had massive floods yet in America. Um, Nevada, um, the Burning Man Festival has had to be, basically had to be shut down. I mean, they haven't even done the, the whole Burning Man thing yet because, you know, they, they burned the whole big wooden structure. So they haven't even done the Burning Man thing yet. 
but they've had to they've had to postpone it. But this is Nevada. The floods in Nevada, right? And you know we had Florida as well, but Nevada's the desert. It's the desert, right? And, you know, I don't know how much rain that they get in the desert, but I'm sure it's not very much, right? And I don't, you know, I didn't even know that deserts really did rain as such, right? You know, but um, yeah, so they've had to put they've had to put it off because if you see out there, yeah, the the um, the sand. Yeah, it's like just that ankle, ankle, knee deep. So in some places, like you see the trucks and that having real problems trying to get out of there. They've, they've asked people not to go, but a lot of people have left. But there's people you need to conserve all your food and all these type of things, you know. So it just comes kind of crazy. But all all of that is down to um, I I believe it's down to global warming, you know. Um, and you know, and all those and that type of stuff, and you know, because um, in Spain, I mean, they've got some massive, massive uh, rain. I mean, the rain in Spain, yeah, it's absolutely flooded out the place in in Spain at the moment. You know, I was, just, I, I think yeah that in this country because we don't really suffer with any type of extreme weather. Really, I mean, it is, it is, um, it is. September now, and the sun has, and we're, looks like we're going to have a heat wave this week, right? But you know, we you know we get every every so often we get like you know we might get extreme rain, so we get some you know so we might get some flooding, and then you know we've we've had you know where it goes up to like forty forty one forty two, right? But this is that you know that's very few and far between. So on a whole, in this country, most of the time, yeah, our weather is very much. Um, we don't get really extreme conditions and like you know hurricanes and and <laughs> and tornadoes. We get small, we do get small ones from time to time, but it's not so much as like you like we see in other countries and that. British schools are falling down, and that's because a lot of our schools was built with a material called rack, and this material. It's got a life. It's got a shelf life, yeah, of around it's probably probably thirty to forty years. It's got a lifespan of. So I know what you're thinking. Why the fuck would you put a school up that's only got a lifespan of that type? I understand that, but I mean, my school where I went to was that. Oh shit, you know, I was. I was I can't remember. I can't remember what what um what year my school was built that I went to. I have to look that up. I can't f completely forgot, right? But my school's an old, old school, old school, right? But it's a brick it's a brick built school, right? And it wasn't. I think when my school was built, rack wasn't something like materials like rack and that wasn't about. So that's probably the reason why it never. You know, this, I'm talking about I'm I'm talking about my infant school. Right now, my secondary school was much more was much more of a modern school, right? So this one, so that one would have had that one more than likely has got rack in it because I can remember when I was at school seeing like parts of the parts of the building, yeah, where you had bits of crumbling and that, you know, didn't look like anything serious at then, right? But obviously, you know, after years and years, much more years, yeah, decades, then it's going to start. They'll start to give way a lot more. So, so they, so, yeah, so they used that material, right? And as, as I said, yeah, you're wondering why, why you'd used in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Why you would just say, why, would, why are we doing that? But because you see, Britain is a country that has been run for, it's been run not for the people, it's run for business to make money from the people. So when you're in that type of situation, you you know there's corners are cut all over the place, you know. So if you know if you, if you don't want to be in that type of situation, then you know, you know maybe perhaps you shouldn't be voting in the way how you vote. If you don't want to be in this type of situation that we're in now, where we've got schools that have fallen to pieces, we've had. I mean, the one school actually collapsed in Kent. Luckily, it was on the weekend. Right, this was a couple of years ago. So you know, this this is a problem they've known about from from time. So it's not like it's not like this is new. They've known about this from time. It's just now because now it's come to a point where they've identified that there are schools that will fall down in the next couple of years. So now they've got so now they've got to get in there and, and get the work done because they've, no, they've left it. No, they've left it a bit late. But you see this. So, so this material now. 
right? Because, you know, it's, I would say for a building, that's a very, very short lifespan. To put up a building that you're, that you're going to be housing, children, you're going to be having children going to, to have like, you know, 30, 30 years, you know, a material that, that's going to last 30 years, I'd say that, like, you know, that's just, you know, why would you do that in the first place? Why, why would you even think about doing something like that? But it's all about cutting costs for these people. That's how they, that's how they run this country. This country is run right, for the sake of business. And business is only there to make money for its shareholders. And that's the reason why our schools are falling down. Right? You see, um, when Labour left power in 2010, but they had already set up plans to build two to three hundred schools a year in this country. So then when obviously when David Cameron and, and um, George Osborne came along with all their austerity measures, they've come along and they said, oh, oh, we'll cut that to a hundred schools a year. So they cut the budget. So they cut it. So they could only, be, so they could only build a hundred new schools a year or fix up. It's a build or fix up. But it's the total is a hundred. So then... Rishi Sunak now, they said to Rishi so they've gone to Rishi Sunak and said, listen, right, we've got, um, we need, you know, we've got a serious problem in our schools. They're going to start falling down anytime soon. So Rishi Sunak said, oh, how can I help? And they said, to, well, you know, we can only build like a hundred, we can only build a hundred school and we need, we need to be able to do more than that. We need to be able to do two to three hundred a year. So Rishi Sunak went away and he had a good think about it. And he came back and he put proposals to him and said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a budget so you can so you can build 50 schools a year. And then the, one of the guys, one of the, one of the um, guys from the education services, he was on the he was on BBC, on the BBC yesterday, and um, he and he said this. So Rishi Sunak has come out and Rishi Sunak has come out swinging, right? Rich, when I tell you this, when I tell you, you know. But not Rishi, he's only little, but he'd come out swinging, right? And he wasn't taking none of it. He was having, Rishi Sunak was having absolutely none of it. How dare you, right, talk about me in that way, right, and tell lies about me? Well, he didn't use those words, but he might as well have. So then Rishi Sunak went on to say, yes, look, when I, what I done was I put in a budget, right, to, um, to build 500 schools, right, at the rate of 50 schools a year. It's like, but that's what they've just accused you of. And you've just slagged them off, right, and said that they was lying. That's not true, you said. And then you just said, and then... Now, you know, before people can get a word out of Rishi Sunak, he just carries on talking because they're multi-mouth, so he just carries on talking. It's like if you went up someone on the street and you said to them, excuse me, have you got the time? And then they started telling you about, you know, how Big Ben was made, how, 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 how Big Ben was made and, you know, how much times a day it, it chimes and why they shut it down a couple of years ago, why they had to close it down a couple of years ago. And think, why are you telling me all this? I just need to know the time. But Rishi Sunak, seriously, and a rack in hospitals. So what they're doing is obese patients, they're having to leave them on the ground floor because if they put them upstairs, then good chance people could start falling through the ceilings because that's the type of country that we're living in, right? where everything in this country has got a material value. Whatever it is, Either corners are cut, right? Because, you know, there's people who need to live in places like the, whether it's the Cayman Islands or, you know, in the Caribbean or British Virgin Islands, you know, or some one of these wonderful places in the world while they've got business in this country, right? Just, you know, just sucking the life out of the people. So our hospitals are built. A lot of, pub, a lot of public buildings have been built with rack. A lot of public buildings, so so you know, so this is this this story is not going to go away at all. You know, you know it's it coming like the um, the cladding, right? Where you think to yourself, why would you put up cladding that's basically solid petrol? But they did. Gillian Keegan has put out a video about this whole issue, and I was watching this, and I was like, to myself, why am I dancing? While I'm watching Gillian Keegan 
on this video. She had a dance track. They put a dance track on this. I just think to myself, are these people, what is wrong with them? There's, there's something wrong with these people. That's what I that's what I say about them. How the hell are you gonna go and put a dance track right on a serious video about a serious issue? Right? You got you know you got you, you got um concrete slabs falling down in schools. You got schools falling down in in Kent, right? And these people are putting they're doing a comedy. It's, you know, I just thought to myself, this is this has got to be a joke, isn't it? This is comedy, but you know that's what she's done. Children are going to school without having showers and un unaware of how to clean their teeth and hunger and all these type of things. And um, I look at their parents and I say, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. This is the, a direct fault of the government. Right? If you think that, you know, you, you've got people who can't pay for their life in this country because everything is so expensive so people you know and they just brought in they just brought in the ULES the ULES is in now so they just brought in the ULES right plus they had a massive you know a nice rise in petrol and diesel prices over August it's gone up in, it's, it's gone up in price food prices are still racing up you know and this morning I'm listening to people on the radio right talking about ah oh, well what's wrong with these people right well they could just boil a kettle right and just wash the job with a flannel 2023 Britain and you've got people saying that, uh, that, that, that they want their fellow citizens to wash themselves with a with hot water with, with, with a kettle and a flannel Send your kids to school, right? Give them, get them up, give them a cold shower. Send them to school with a cold shower. You got parents who, you got some people who might be living in blocks of flats. They haven't got outside areas, right? So you know, uh, you know, they they might, you know, but you know, we, 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 you know, people in this country, right? There's people in this country, right, who know how much a shower costs. Now that's when you know that. Things are really bad. If you if you need to know how much a shower costs, then you know things are really bad. You know that things are really, really terrible. Right? And you have to wonder how comes Britain has come into this massive consumer market where everything is about extracting as much money out of the people as possible. And you know, don't care if they're living on the fucking streets. Who gives a shit? They could be living on the street. Don't care. Right, just get as much out of them as possible. Right, bring in the fucking you less charge when you know just when you know yourself. Well, these people, I know these people can't afford it. Businesses have to, you know, so much people have to go out of business now. Right, you know, I tell you who's really going to suffer because of you less. Right, it's going to be the care, the, the care industry. Right, for to care for the health, you know, that's going to really suffer because a lot of these people, a lot of people who go around and they care for these people, they might, you know, they might be driving an older vehicle because you know they don't get paid. In between trips and that, so they, so so for them, it's best they get to the next job as quickly as possible when they're back, when they can get back onto the, on you know onto the um, pace onto being paid because you know in between driving from house to house or getting on a bus from house to house, they don't get paid, right? So they only get paid once they get to the client's house. Once they leave the client's house, they stop getting paid. That's how this country works. You know, but um, so that's why, so that's why, you know, we've got children going to school with um, with dirty clothes and, um, you know, not having showers and, you know, not eating proper meals because, you know, unfortunately, the parents just, can't, you know, they're already at their limit with all, you know, with all sorts. I mean, you know, a lot of people have just had like, you know, five, six, seven, a thousand pounds put on their mortgages. So that's the reason why this. You know, it's like that. But people just surprise me the way how people talk in this country. Over 800 people crossed the channel over the weekend. And, you know, it seems like that um, Rishi, I'll stop the boats, right? The man who likes to dress in children's clothing has made some promises that, you know, we all knew that he couldn't um, keep the promises that he made because it's impossible to... to um, these people have got a human brain. That's the thing, right? And how how is it, right, you think that you can stop people from just 
coming to this country. I mean, they've made it, you know, they've, you know, they call it illegal, they've made it illegal. So, but they, they, they seem to think that they could just stop people. And that, for me, that was never, it's never going to work. It's just, uh, it was always going to be really, it was a stupid thing for him to promise when the French don't want the people there and the people want to come here. It's not like, as if to say, the French are saying, well, you know, people who want to stay in France, oh, well, they're, they're, they're putting them on boats and sending them over. They're not doing that. They might be escorting them halfway, but they're not escorting people who they're, who they're chucking out of France. They're not doing that. They're escorting people who want to come to this country. And Britain thinks, that Britain thinks, as per usual, what it could do, it could just pay its way out of that and just say, well, we'll give you a load of money to keep them in France. And say, well, how's that work? How has that worked? Because 800 people come over and, you know. And then, we have a major incident in Coventry. I don't know what's happened with this incident, but I know that two people are dead and it was, a, it was a, involving a car who has mowed down two people in the first place. One of them died and uh, one's them seriously injured and then drove off from that scene, went a couple of miles away and then mowed down a cyclist, it looks like. Right, and then I, f I think the police, I think by this time the police might have caught up with the car so that it was driven into a house after that. So, but we're still yet to find out what that, in what that complete incident's about. But it seems like it was a pretty serious incident, you know, where obviously the person has, you know, I don't know if, whether they know the first people they've mowed down, but I mean, <laughs> It's, they probably certainly couldn't have known the second person or the, the person on the bicycle, right? So, we, so you know, we can look at this and say, well, something's probably going on there, but we don't know what yet. And it looks like Wilco is lost on the high street because um, they, they, they did have a, like some type of takeover bid going on, but um, I think that, that that fell through. At the moment, I think you've got the guy that owns... I think it's W. H. Smith or, or HMV. He owns that, and he, um, he, I think he's trying to get three hundred of the. I think I don't know how much stores they've got. I think they've got four hundred. They might have more, but I think it's about four hundred. But um, he's trying to get at least three hundred of the stores to stay open. But you know, for the bulk of it, the the main bulk has gone. I mean, the shelves are empty in Wilco's. And you know, so I think I think they've gone from the high street. But you know, in this country, it's so difficult, so so difficult, and so expensive to be running businesses in this country because you know people's all you know, their gas and electric bills have just doubled. And you know, when you're used to making um, when you're used to making a profit, and then all of a sudden you've got serious cuts into that profit, and your business your business is still profitable but it's not you know a lot of you know these companies they like to be hundreds of millions of pounds in profits and you know if they you know if they you know if they was like if there was uh you know 150 million in profits last year then this year they need to be you know they, they want to be like you know closer to 200 million in profits but if they were to be in if they were to take a profit of 100 million they'd be like oh my god we're going bankrupt this is terrible because you know they've taken 50 million less in profits than they did than they did the year before and let's speak about some Brexit, because the UK has once again postponed the goods checks, the goods that come into the UK. They've postponed the checks again from the EU, because you know why? I'm waiting for your answer. Because sovereignty. That's why. Because we have sovereignty. Right? So we can tell people, we ain't checking your goods. There you go. We're not checking your goods. I don't think that was supposed. I, I, you know, you know, like the whole Tata deal. You know, they, you know, the, Tata is even getting even more money out of this country because you know they've got the steel. You know, the Tata steel works, right? So now they just start this government. Yeah, well, you know what? You need to give us some more money, or well, you know what? We're gonna do something. Once that was British steel. British steel. Right. Coming from a country. Right, we're, we're putting up buildings all the time, making cars and all sorts of different stuff. And you're telling me that British Steel is now right in the hands of an Indian magnate. <laughs> just unbelievable, seriously, just unbelievable. And so Tata, I've, you know, over the last couple of over the last couple of weeks, I've heard deals what Tata's getting like a billion pounds from our government. A Bit to one of the richest men in the world, 
Right? Where does they say, oh, yeah, you need, need money? Do you need money? Do you need money? <laughs> to the, one of the richest men in the world. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's just, you know, soon, very soon, I'm, sure, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering whether or not Tata's had as much money out of our government yeah, as Richard Branson. Because, you know, he just get a lot of money out of the government too. Billions. <laughs> <laughs> you take all the virgin services that he just run for you for, for, for you, run, and, you know so much so right that you know he earns so much that he can afford right to give us his helicopter because you know the the um the air ambulance right is a virgin ambulance virgin helicopter right so that's how much richard Branson. they just say hey take that ah. <laughs> right so <laughs> but you know because you know you've got train lines and and hospitals and all sorts of different all sorts of different things right but so much billions richard richard Brands had but tata he's pushing he's he's he, he must be running close to because you know what tata's just like yeah 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 i need money 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 <laughs> and they're from the british government and every minute they're just nicing them up <laughs> Every and it's just it just shows you yeah, that because you know obviously um it's supposed to be companies come to this country right um because our economy is so boom not government should be bribing people to come to this country or stay in this country that's like you owning a nightclub and then going outside and grabbing a load of men and saying listen i'll pay for you to go into my nightclub <laughs> I say no, mate. I'm not going to do it because you know what? If you need to pay for me to come into your nightclub, <laughs> then I'm not coming in. <clears throat> Wiggles, the cyclo company, have posted ninety two million pounds in losses. Let's count that together: one million, two million, eighty, ninety, ninety two million in losses, and they're blaming Brexit and a little bit of COVID. But they blame Brexit. And I would say, yeah, that Brexit is looming large over that situation. It's just looking down upon the situation right, with its hands on its hips. That's how Brexit is over. That's so 92 mil. How the hell you can lose that much money in business? Michael Gove says Brexit freedoms means pollution rules can be watered down. That's what the Brexit. That's what we get for our Brexit freedoms. We can water. We can water down the pollution rules. I say, isn't there enough shit in our waterways as it is? And these people want to. They want to water down the rules even more. It, right? You know, our water. You know, I've, I say that what in this country, what we got in this country, um, that you can actually usable. It's less than. It's less. Right than twenty percent, and I think it's I, I think it's a, quite a lot less than twenty percent of the waters in this country. I mean, we had some we had the um, the triathletes come over a couple of weeks ago, yeah, and they got ill because you know they they you know yeah triathlon is the one where they do the running, swimming, and cycle, right? Yeah, when they done the swim, these people all got ill because of the dirty, stinky water. You know, they must have, right, and then go, end up with a log in their mouth. A whole lot. And it's not made of wood. Ah, UK to use Brexit freedoms to cut out red tape over electric car batteries. I just told yourself, this is, I think this was independent, independent. What is it with these people? Say, so what Brexit freedoms and electric car batteries is it was just what? <laughs> Seriously, these people, yeah. I think they are major gaslighters. I think that they just sit around thinking, what can we gaslight with these people today? There must be something we can do to gaslight these people. There's got to be. But seriously, just like, I don't know. I just think that, that they, um, I just think that it's a level of incompetence that these people are showing. And I think just because of the, the jobs that they're in, people do expect them to be, and people can't, I don't think people can understand. And 
I don't think people can understand right, the the level of incompetence that these that these guys show with everything. That's why everything in this country is working really badly. You know, there's nothing that's working. There's nothing at all that's working correctly. Whether it's whether it's the NHS, you know, the potholes in the roads, nothing is working properly. Whatever industry you look at, right, if the government's got any involvement in it, it's not working properly. I mean, you know, the government's you know, dealing with the um with the railway workers, right? And those are private companies. They say, well, why why is the gov why why have we got government ministers getting themselves involved in that? Because these are private companies. Because really because of all the subsidies that these companies are given. They're not really private companies. They're really still owned by they're still got owned by by the people, but the parts that's owned by the people, right, are the parts that there's no profits in that part because all the parts that there's profits in, right, that's all private, right. But if it comes down to building infrastructure and things like that for the for the railways, right, all of that will be public money. Private companies will be oh, no, 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 we can't do that. Private companies don't, they'll never build these type of infrastructure. They'll, they'll leave it to governments to build this type of infrastructure. And then after that, they just take it. Yeah, you know, but but when it when it actually comes down to it, right, because all these guys they run off subsidies, right? Whether it's gas, whether it's gas, water, electric, right, train companies, they all run off subsidies. And they all got hundreds of millions in subsidies, right? But all their profits are all privatized. All of it. All along the way, you know, but that's what you get when you um, when you've got a country that has voted against its own interest for so many years. I mean, if you just look at for the facts, if you just look at the facts, right, this company, this country has turned its back on Michael Foote, Gordon Brown, Ed Miliband, Jeremy Corbyn. OK, and now people are wondering why. They, well, hospitals, they, there's no beds in hospitals. Because if you're dealing with capitalists, yeah, capitalists, right, will think, well, <clears throat> well, they, you know, we need, there's a thousand, we, we need a thousand, there's a thousand people who need the hospital place, for example. Right, so what we'll do is we'll provide 900. That's what capitalists will do. Right? Whereas your socialist will provide... One thousand and one. That's what you saw, right? Because they'll always make sure that there's, that you've got more as your socialist, but as your capitalist, oh no, they cut everything because everything has got a monetary value on it, and that's why this country is in the very poor condition that it is in, right? You know, this country is like a derelict house, and the, and all, all the local people have gone in and they've taken that. Everything, right? They've, you know, they've ripped up all the flooring and they've, you know, so they could get all the copper out and they've ripped out all the wires out of the electric, right? So everything has just been, that's what this country is. It's just a shell, right? It has been turned into a nothing country by the people, but especially in the last 13 years. Anyway, my friends, look, I've gone quite far, far over on this video, but this video is, I haven't done one for absolute ages, so I haven't done one for the whole, first one for the whole summer. So, no, I think the last one I've done was around my birthday, I think, yeah, so in the middle of summer. So, um, yeah, so this, this one I haven't, I haven't done any videos for absolute ages, it feels like. But, so I'm back now, anyway, my friends, this is by any means necessary. I'm the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.